Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, we are going to look at the best ClipChamp video editing tips and tricks. If you've never heard of ClipChamp before, it's free video editing software made by Microsoft. To get ClipChamp on Windows 11, go down to search and then type in ClipChamp and then click on the best match. You can also use it directly on the web by navigating to clipchamp.com. You can also get it through the Microsoft Store. Simply search for ClipChamp and then you can install it. ClipChamp has some phenomenal features. For example, you can take text and you can convert it into speech. Be sure to subscribe. I think that's a really good idea. You can also record your screen and your webcam at the same time. And there's even something called the coach, which will give you feedback on how you speak. Here, it tells me that I need to use more intonation in my voice. Maybe that's why everyone thinks I sound like an AI robot. You can also adjust the dimensions of your video with just a few clicks. This way you can get your video ready for Instagram or TikTok. These are just a few of the ClipChamp video editing tips and tricks that we're going to look at today. Let's check these out. Tip number one, over on the left hand side, let's click on the icon that says record and create. And right here at the bottom, we have the option for text to speech. Let's click on that. And right here, this opens up a dialogue to convert text to speech. Right up at the top, you could select your language. And there are so many different options in this list. Now, one of the fun things to try is choose another language and then have it try to read English. And you'll get a little bit of that accent, a really neat thing to test out. Here, I also select English, United States. Here, you can choose the voice and you have many different voice options. Let's go with, I think Tony sounds pretty good. Right over here, you could also choose a voice style. So you could go with angry, cheerful, excited. You have all these different options here. I'll go with, let's select cheerful. Here, you could also select the speed. So you could go slow or you could go faster. And you could also choose the pitch of the voice. You have all of these different tools that you can use to adjust how the voice sounds. Here, I'll select high. And right here, you can type in your text. I'll type in, be sure to subscribe, and then let's preview it. Be sure to subscribe. <laughs> that sounds pretty cheerful, I like that. Here, I'll click on save to media. This has now added the text to speech to my media. Here, I can simply click on it and then I can drag it down onto my timeline and I can use this anywhere in my project. Tip number two, and this is a quick one. In the top left hand corner, click on your media. Here, we see the import media button. Let's click on this drop down, and here you have the option to import media from your phone. When you click on this, this generates a QR code. Scan this with the photo app on your phone and then open up the link. On your phone now, you can select photos or videos that you would like to bring into ClipChamp. It actually works surprisingly well. Tip number three, and this is a brand new one that will make your video so much more accessible. In the top right hand corner, let's click on this icon that says captions. And here I can turn on auto captions. Here you could select the language that you use in your video. And there are so many different options to choose from. I'll stick with the default. Right here you could also filter for profanity if you want a cleaner talk track. I'll turn on auto captions. And check this out. Here I could see a transcript of everything that was said within this video. And just at a glance it looks pretty accurate. It includes all of the capitalization. It also includes punctuation. If for whatever reason I need to make an update, I could simply click in here and I could start typing. But it looks pretty good, so I don't need to do that. If I want to jump to a specific point in the video or in the transcript, I could simply click on the timestamp and that'll bring me to that point in the video. Now here I could play it and you'll see how the transcript appears overlaid on the video. That's pretty cool. Right up here, I could also download the captions as an SRT file. So why would I want to do this? Well, let's say that you want to upload your video to YouTube. You could also upload the SRT file, and this way you'll get this transcript onto YouTube. And this is better quality than what you'll find from the auto-generated captions that YouTube generates. Tip number four, you can record your screen with your webcam. Over on the left-hand side, let's click on record and create. And right here, I can record both my screen and my camera, just my camera or just my screen. I'll select screen and camera. Right down here, I can choose the microphone that I would like to use. And over here, I can select my camera. And there's also something called the coach. 
This will listen to you speak and then it'll give you feedback. It's really neat to test out. I'll turn that on. Once I'm all ready to go, I'll click on the red record button. And here I can choose what window I want to share. I also like this window of the Kevin Cookie Company and then click on share. And my recording is now active. Here I can demonstrate things on my screen and down below I can see my camera. Once I'm all done, I'll click on this stop icon down below. Over here, I can review my speech. This is where the coach gives me feedback, but for now, I'll simply click on save and edit. This brings the recording into my media. Here, I see the screen recording, and then I also see my camera recording, and it's automatically grouped them onto my timeline, so here I see my video overlaid on top of the screen recording. Now, the really neat thing is, because they are separate files, here I could select my video file, and I could adjust that overlay. I could position it in different spots on the screen, so I could get it to look exactly how I want it to look. Tip number five, you can use jump cuts to increase the emphasis on certain parts of your video. Here I have a video clip of myself speaking, and right at about the six second mark, I make a profound point that I want to emphasize. Right up here, I can click on the split icon, or I can press S on my keyboard, and that splits the clip down below. And right here at the 12 second mark, I want to split it again. Here I'll place the playhead directly over the middle clip. Here I'll select this one and I'll zoom in on myself. Here I'll zoom in and then I'll center this right at about there. Now when I go back and I play the clip, here you'll see that it starts out with me zoomed out where I'm talking and coming up in just a moment, it's going to jump in, which is why it's called a jump cut. And here you see me zoomed in and then right at about this point, it'll jump out again. This is a really nice cut that you can use in your dialogue scenes. Tip number six, Clipchamp makes it really easy to include subscribe buttons on top of your video. Over on the left hand side, let's click on stock video. And right here, there's a category called subscribe panels. Let's click on this to expand the category. And here when I hover over, you can preview all of these different subscribe buttons that you can overlay on your video. And there are some really nice options here. I'll select this one and drag it onto my timeline. You can position it exactly where you want it. Now when I play it, here you see I'm asking people to subscribe to my channel, and here we see that subscribe button, but it's right over my face, that's not where I want it. Here I'll click on the subscribe button and I can drag it to a new location. I'll put it right down here, that's a good location. And here you see me making my pitch to subscribe to my channel, and here we have that beautiful subscribe button on the bottom. That looks pretty good. Tip number seven, you can use the green screen filter to remove the green screen and then replace that with either an image or a video. With the green screen clip selected on my timeline, over on the right hand side, let's click into filters. And I have so many different filters that I can choose from. All the way down at the bottom, there's one filter called green screen. Let's select this. I have a few different options down below. Here I can set the screen threshold. Here, if I go too high, you'll notice a little bit of noise. And here, if I go too low, it'll start to remove some of the green on me, and I don't want that. So let's go, let's say right at about here. I think that looks good. You can also choose the color of your screen. Maybe you're using a blue screen. This all looks good, so I'll close filters. Now you see me in front of a black background, but I want to insert an image there. Over on the left hand side, here I could select stock images or I could even select stock videos. I'll go with images and right here I'll click into the free to use category. And there are so many different options here, but let's go with maybe this space one here. I think that looks good. I can drag that onto my timeline, but I want to put it under the clip with the green screen. I'll place it right here and let me extend it so it's the same length as this other clip. Up in the preview area, I'll expand it so it fills up the full frame. I think that looks pretty good. Let's play it to see how it turned out. That looks pretty good, I like it. Tip number eight, you can do what's called picture in picture or overlay one video on top of another video. Here I have some footage of people baking cookies here at the Kevin Cookie Company and I want to provide some commentary on top of this. Over here in my media, I have this video of myself providing commentary. Here I could pull that down onto my timeline and I'll place it above all of these baking videos. This layer is above these other layers, so it appears on top. With this clip selected here, I'll adjust the size. So now you can see this video clip along with the video clips underneath. And now I could position this exactly where I want it. I'll place it right there. And now when I play it, 
you'll see the video in back play along with me providing my commentary on top. Tip number nine, here in my timeline, I have two clips and right now I just have a hard cut between them, but I would rather insert a transition and then make it that much more epic with a sound effect. Over on the left hand side, I'll click into transitions and here I have all these different transition options. Let's go with this push right option. Here I could press on it and I could drag it between two clips on my timeline. And that is now inserted a transition at that point. But I think it'll be a lot more epic if there's a sound effect to go along with it. Also over on the left hand side, let's click on music and SFX. Up on top, click on the SFX tab. And here we have a category called free to use. Let's click into that one. And here, just like all the other screens, we have many, many options. I also like this one called the Flash Whoosh Swoosh 7. Let's listen to it. That sounds pretty good. Here I could drag this down onto my timeline and I'll place it right at this point where the transition occurs. So let's now listen to it with the sound effect. CookieCompany.com. Ooh, that is pretty slick. Tip number 10, it's really easy to make videos for TikTok and Instagram using ClipChamp. Here I have a commercial for the Kevin Cookie Company and I wanna put this on TikTok and Instagram. In the top right hand corner, here I could adjust the dimensions. By default, this is 16 by nine. When I click on this, here I see all of these other options. Here's nine by 16. This works well for Instagram Reels and on TikTok. So there I could select that. Now it's adjusted the dimensions, but it fit my video within those dimensions. Here I could click on my video and I could expand it so it uses up the full frame. Now when I play it, check that out. My commercial is now ready to go for TikTok and Instagram. If we go back to the dimensions over here, here I see all of these other options. Here you have square, which is good for Instagram posts. You have four by five, two by three, and also 21 by nine. Tip number 11, you can insert some amazing overlays on top of your video. Over on the left-hand side, let's click on graphics and then click into frames and overlays. If we go all the way to the bottom of this category, there are two really neat and hidden overlays. One of them is called the audio visualizer. Here, I'll pull this onto my timeline and I'll zoom in a little bit and then expand how long this is. Now, when I play this video, you'll see the audio visualizer over my video. That is pretty cool. I'll remove this for now. Also, over on the left-hand side within graphics, you can also add a progress bar. I'll place this on my timeline. You can adjust the length of this or how long you want the progress bar to appear. Now, when I play it, you'll see this progress bar across the bottom of my video. When I click into the progress bar, I could go up to the right hand side and I could adjust the colors and you could adjust other effects. This brings us to tip number 12, the very last tip of today. Here I have a video clip of myself and I want to turn this into a GIF. In the top right hand corner, let's click on export and here I have all these different options, but there's also one called GIF, as long as your video is under 15 seconds. I'll click on this. And this is now exporting this as a GIF that I can now use on the web. And check that out. I now have my very own GIF that I could use anywhere on the web. All right, let me know down below in the comments, which tip was your favorite one? I think for me personally, I like the text to speech. I think that is such awesome technology. To watch more videos like this one, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.